Every day, this is just so much fun. This is so different and so wonderful. So today we're talking about Friday feels and we got feeling all over the place. So Juliana Zobris, she's an author, a speaker, a singer, pulling it off, which is all about removing your fears and putting on some confidence, right? That's right. So tell us about it. How are you? Gorgeous. So good. Thank you for having me. I love that you're finally, quote, spilling the tea on your secrets on how you have pulled this off. You're a fashion muse. You're an artist. You're an incredible wife. Support. Mm. How do you do it? How do you pull it off? Well, I love a great calendar. I'm obsessed with my calendar. <laughs> no, but really, you know, people would ask me that all the time, which is why I named the book Pull It Off, because they would say, how can you pull it off? Or I could never pull that off. And I started to flip that question and say to them, well, who's telling you that you can't? And it was so interesting because while I expected, um, you know, finances or time or family commitment or, or you know, a, a myriad of different answers, the answer was always, well, I don't really know actually why I feel like I can't pull this off. And what was amazing to me and so um, uh, eye-opening to me is that I think that we're all dealing with these insecurities and fears that really take a strong amount of courage and confidence to overcome. So it's less about avoiding insecurity and less about um, avoiding fear, but really just to reframe it in our head and and exercise the courage that we need to pull off in life what we want to pull off. I love that you talk about reframing it because really, truly, even the more success you reach in your relationships, in your career, whatever mm -hmm. it might be, the more insecurities you, you do have and you really just have to reframe it. It doesn't mean you're going to be without the self-doubt, without right. the worry. You just really have to strengthen your ability to flip the switch on it. Yeah, and it's really important in today's culture, um, you know, we're sort of inundated with this message of fearlessness. Like, I'm so fearless or don't care what anybody thinks. And the reality is that we all really do. Like no human being, unless there's something wrong mentally, <laughs> does never cares what people think. That's not a healthy way to live. So the amazing thing about the part of the brain that exercises courage is that it can actually be stronger. So I wish that I could just do like a singular crunch and be, have like <laughs> a six pack for life, right? I wish that that was the case, but it's not the case. And the brain works the same way. So the more that you can exercise this courage. It's called the subgenual anterior cingulate cortex, but it functions more like a muscle than it does an organ in so much as you can actually allow it to become stronger mm. by not avoiding our fears, by not avoiding our insecurities, but by actually seeing them as doors to walk through um, right. to become. So courageous. was there something that you most, you know, people have like a moment where everything shifted. Was there some moment for you when you decided like, I'm not going to live like this anymore and I'm going to yes. live with confidence. What was that for you? Yeah, there was. My son, I have three children, and my son, my first son was um, four months old. And I got onto an elevator <laughs> late at night, <laughs> like midnight, and I was holding him. I'm already super insecure, first time mom, you know how that goes. And this woman leaned over to my kid and she's like, oh, mommy, I should really be in bed. Like starts talking to my kid and not to me, like very passive aggressive, which is my favorite. No. <laughs> and uh, so what we talk about in the book, chapter two, she was shooting on me. S-H-O-U-L-D. And, you know, by the end of the night, I'm like neck deep in all these shoulds that she had for me. And I'm like shooting on myself and thinking I'm a terrible mom, and a terrible person. And I should just quit everything that I'm investing myself in. And the reality is that shoulds are just simply opinions and preferences that are unique to each of us as individuals. And they're not inherently wrong or bad, but we do need to be careful to not place those shoulds and expectations mm -hmm. on other people. I should on myself all the time. I know we do. And it's I not really a good do. look. Why do we do that? No, I, I, I don't know. I, I, it's always like, well, I'm driving. Oh, I should have left earlier. I shouldn't have worn this. I should have brought that. Why didn't I think of this? And it really does just kind of bring you down. Yeah. How do you stop does. yourself? Well, I think first and foremost, by acknowledging um, the reality of them, by acknowledging the fact that, you know, in L.A., there are trends and there are expectations and there are ways of living. They're not inherently wrong or bad, but they are what they are. And in our nation, they are these same types of social norms that we sort of coexist within. And so I think when we can educate ourselves on a global standpoint, when we can educate our children on a global standpoint, that there are so many different ways of living life and so many different ways of uh, um, being successful or even what beauty is, you know, that we need to really educate ourselves and our children on that so that we realize that 
these shoulds are everywhere. And again, not bad, but you have to decide and own for yourself and be confident in who you want to be. Wow, it's love just it. fantastic. And you're absolutely right. I love, I love that perspective that, you know, the should that we have in our head is just one of infinite options right. of thoughts that we can choose. And it's often you know, really based on the culture, the society, the group of friends that we have, whether or not we think it's something that's valuable or worth continuing right. to think or not. So for you then, what would a repetition or a rep be? You mentioned sort of like doing these reps and mm -hmm. learning to reframe mm -hmm. these thoughts and these feelings, you know, one by one. How does a person right. do that? Let's say that they're experiencing some kind of insecurity. Maybe they feel like they have to be perfect or they should have right. left earlier that day or whatever. How do you recommend that they shift or reframe that one thought? Yeah, yeah. that's a great question. Um, if you can switch something, like leaving earlier, setting your time early, there's an element of discipline that goes into these things that we want to change. But then when it comes to facing our insecurities, to name them, I think, is first and foremost. To say, why am I feeling this? What is this saying about me? And how do I appropriately respond? So asking yourself those three things, I think, is really vital to being able to determine what it is that we're actually facing ourselves with and to be able to name it, you know, to be able to just see it from a mile away and know that it's coming at you and I'm about to get insecure, you know, and, and then to just choose. You really do simply choose. Um, your brain doesn't differentiate between a junior high girl on, you know, at school sticking up for herself and a 70 year old man running into a burning down building. Your brain doesn't differentiate between these moments of courage. It actually just knows that it's being courageous. So we all have the capability mm. of one by one um, little decision by little decision, deciding to name what it is and then appropriately respond. Mm. I just love that. So your husband is one of the greatest players of American baseball. Yes, he is. So <laughs> we must be incredibly proud, but that must create a lot of expectations, especially, mm. you know, in society mm -hmm. that you're living in the public eye. You're an example. Tell us about your experience with that and the responsibility you have. Yeah. Um, you know, psychologists refer to this as the false consensus effect, where we, we tend to believe that we all sort of coexist one way or that we, we have these expectations and that you need to fit and live up to whatever this expectation is. And um, for me, it's just been vitally important my entire life to be sincere, to um, take the time that I need to take for myself to invest back into myself, to know myself, and to really actively um, be willing to be who I am and to know who that is and be able to communicate that to the world. Mm -hmm. So while the, there are definitely expectations mm -hmm. and maybe a certain perception, um, it's just so important for us to live in sincerity. Mm -hmm. nice. Absolutely love that. You know, one of the things that um, you remind me of that I think helped me a lot too was just coming to a realization of how futile people pleasing was. It oh, wasn't yeah. making me happy and like no matter how many people I would please, it just, I still wasn't happy because there was always one more person. Right. <laughs> yes. It was endless. Yes. And then I noticed if I pleased myself that it was all, I was all good. Right. Even if, you know, 99 people weren't pleased. Yeah. So I love you for reminding us of that. Yeah, lesson. thank yeah. you. I say it all the time, but I've never met somebody that I agree with 100%. And yeah. we're yeah. such right. fickle people yeah. that um, for us to just release ourselves from thinking that everyone will always approve of us, well, then you can live in freedom. It might feel depressing for a second, but that's actually your moment of liberation and freedom to go. There's always going to be somebody that doesn't like me, so just screw it. Like, I'm just going to be me then, so you know? Awesome. Well, you're yes. so talented, yeah. doing everything you're up to, singing, doing all this stuff, and just keeping up with, you have a huge life, so Thank just you. honoring you and, and celebrating you. And she's pulling it off. You are pulling it off. <laughs> <laughs> Trying, off. working on it. You got right here, it's fantastic. Thank so you fun. so much. Mm -hmm. Tell Thank everyone you. where they can find and follow you and buy your book. Yeah, you can follow me everywhere. Um, well, Instagram is my favorite. We have a beautiful community of honest and vulnerable people on my Instagram, Juliana Zobris. And then the book is everywhere. It's Barnes and Noble and Amazon and all the bookstores. Yeah. That's right, where all okay. great books are sold. Yes, right. yes. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you so we much. We encourage you to pull it off and taking us through our next break, America's Family Band, The Falcos. One, two, three, four.